Hi there, welcome to Jujube DIY. I'm Sarah, thanks so much for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you a mega compilation video with 32 of my favorite summer projects. So go grab a snack, grab a drink, and let's get started. So for this first DIY, I'm going to use tumbling tower blocks. I am going to need three sets of three. And basically here, I am just kind of measuring them out against each other to make sure that they fit well. Sometimes those tumbling tower blocks don't always, um, aren't always the same size, I should say. And so I just grabbed three that were pretty much the same size so that I could glue them together and create a little square, just like you see here. Um, and then I always have a baby wipe on hand to wipe up any excess glue that spills out when I stick them together. <laughs> then I'm gonna paint these um, using some of this nautical blue color. I'll paint one in white and then one in the crimson red. I also have these three stars that I popped off of a Dollar Tree sign. They were a little too shiny for me, so I'm using some of this folk art paint in um, brushed silver, it's like a brushed metal paint, and it's just to kind of dull them down a little bit. Next, I'm gonna take another tumbling tower block, and I'm gonna add a little wood glue and hot glue, and I'll glue that to the bottom of this blue piece. And then I'll just add a little clamp there just to kind of hold it together until everything dries. And while that's drying, I'm going to take the red block and the white block, and I'll glue those together just um, while we're waiting for that blue block to dry. Next, I'm gonna take some of this blue and white Baker's twine from the Dollar Tree, add a little hot glue there in the back, and then I'll wrap it around the top on the red a couple times. And then I'm gonna add those stars, one to each color of the blocks. So now our blue block is dry, and I'm gonna use some red and white Baker's twine here at the bottom for the blue. And I'll wrap that again around a couple of times, just to secure it back with glue. And then of course, we're gonna add our star right on top. Now that we have that done, we're gonna add our blue block to our red and white block, just like that with the glue, the wood glue, I should say, and the hot glue together. And then I realized that it needed an extra little block on the back to make this stand up. So I will glue another tumbling tower block to this little stand, and now it'll stand on its own, and it is a perfect addition to your patriotic tear tray. For our second DIY, we're gonna use some of these little uh, domino pieces that you can find at the Dollar Tree in the kids section. They're just super lightweight wood, um, kind of like, I guess, a balsa wood maybe. I'm not really sure what they're made of, but they're just very thin and super easy uh, to craft with. So I'm going to find the center of the domino and then measure down on each side so that I can create a little peak on each of these dominoes. And then just taking my box knife, I'm going to cut them um, until, you know, just kind of keep scoring on it until it can be separated there. And then I'm gonna take a fingernail file and just kind of sand this up just to get those sharp edges off. And then for one of these pieces, I'm going to cut off a little bit of the bottom. We're probably cutting off like maybe a half an inch there, three quarters of an inch, something like that. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact. You just want one to be a little bit shorter than the others. Next, I'm gonna go in, I'm going to paint this one with a crimson from Waverly. I'll paint one in white and then the other one in the nautical blue. And that's the Hello Hobby nautical, no, not Hello Hobby. Hello, yeah, Hello Hobby, right? That's from Walmart. <laughs> the Hello Hobby uh, chalk paint in that nautical blue color. Then I glued two tumbling tower blocks end to end and I painted those white. And now I'm going to glue my little quote unquote houses together. 
Now I'm going to sandwich the bottoms of my little houses in between those tumbling tower blocks. And this will create um, a piece that is freestanding and can be put on a tear tray. Then I'm gonna use my favorite Scrabble letters. I love using these in my crafting, especially for my tear trays. And I'm going to spell out USA. And I'll stick those on each one of the houses. And then for a little bit extra decor on this cute little piece, I'm gonna add a little bit of jute twine just to the top to kind of tie them all together. And here is a look at this piece. I think it is so stinking cute. For DIY number three, I'm going to use a wood letter. This one I think probably came from Michael's and I'm just going to use my ruler to kind of section off some areas. Now, depending on what letter you might be using, it might look a little different to you, but basically what you're trying to do is make it look like a flag. So I had the corner there where I sectioned it off for the blue and white stars, and then the rest of it will be red and white. Using a little half inch paintbrush here to paint that in, you could definitely uh, use some washi tape or regular tape to mark off your areas if you want to make sure that you've got those crisp clean lines. Next I'm going to go in with a paint pen and I will just add in those little white stars. And this project is super easy, super cute, and again, perfect for a tear tray. For DIY number four, we're gonna use some clothespins for this project. I am just gonna take these clothespins apart. I don't need that middle metal piece. You can save those for later if you'd like. You can make a lot of fun projects using the center springs of clothespins. Um, you know, just go check on Pinterest. You'll find lots of projects using those. So now I'm gonna paint um, my clothespins blue. And so I decided to try the plastic bag method. And I can tell you right now, this is not my favorite method at all. It was very messy, uh, it didn't cover. And so I feel like it would have been a lot uh, less work to just paint them with the paintbrush. But, you know, wanted to give it a try and I'll let you guys know I didn't like it, but maybe it's a technique you will like. So then I'm gonna go in with my paintbrush and just kind of fill in all those areas that didn't get any paints, like the little valleys and stuff. So while those are drying, I'm going to prepare our sign. I'm gonna take two of the long boards from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna attach them together with one of, well, with two of these jumbo craft sticks. So just adding some hot glue, I will just place that right over the seam of the two signs. And this gives us a nice big sign to work with. Now flipping our sign over, I'm gonna add some spackle to the holes and to that seam uh, along the back of the boards. And this is gonna end up being the front of our sign. And I wanted it to look seamless. So that's why I'm adding the spackle because I didn't want those holes to show or that center seam. So I'll just wipe up any excess spackle. And then once it's all dry, I'll give it a quick sand and then go in with the Waverly chalk paint in white. And once that's dry, I'm gonna mark off my stripe. So just using my ruler here, um, I'm gonna mark off a section um, on each side and then I'm gonna run my painter's tape along my board. And I'm not really sure how many inches in between my stripes there is, but you can make your stripes as big or as small as you want. So just keep going until you are happy with the size of your stripes. Now to help keep my paint from bleeding, I'm gonna go in with a makeup sponge and I'm gonna dab the color that I'm using along the painter's tape first and that'll just help create a nice line that doesn't bleed when I go to paint in the rest of that white area. 
So once our clothespins are dry, I made a star out of them. And as you can see, I am just putting the second star together right on top of the first star. And that will make sure that my stars are pretty much the same size. I am going to place my stars down where I want them. I'm gonna give them a little mark so that I can make sure I get them back where I placed them. And then I'm going to find my wood glue <laughs> and I'm going to glue these down. So I'll use a little bit of the wood glue. I really like the uh, super wood glue from the Dollar Tree that you can get. And then I'll add a little bit of hot glue for that quick hold. So I'll just put those down and then on my Cricut, I um, cut out stars and stripes in silver vinyl. Isn't this just such a cute sign? And it's so big. Like that's the, the fun part about doing these kinds of signs um, with your Dollar Tree long signs is that you can really make a substantial sign for so cheap. So to finish off the edges, I'm just gonna add some nautical rope and I love how this piece turned out. Moving on to our next DIY, I am taking one of these wood block houses. They are usually around the Dollar Tree year round, or you can find them in other places. Um, and I just gave one a coat of blue and one a coat of red. And if you're curious about what I'm using for my projects, I will link each of the videos that these came from in my description box down below. If I tried to list everything in my description box, uh, there would not be enough room <laughs> down there. So I'm just gonna link the videos and then if you are interested in whatever it is, um, you can just go to that video, look in that description box and you'll find the information there. So again, just using my Cricut and vinyl, I am going to do some stars, stars <laughs> for the blue and then I cut out 4th of July and some stars for the red one. And that is pretty much all there is for this project. And these are beautiful little shelf sitters. So for this DIY, we're gonna use the metal bottle caps from the Dollar Tree. Now, if your Dollar Tree isn't carrying these in store, I just looked on the website. So this is the end of April, 2022 and they do have them available on the website. So you have to order three of them, which isn't bad for Dollar Tree. Sometimes you have to order like 20 of something in order to get it, but you can have these delivered straight to your store or to your home. And I think that that is awesome. So if you don't have these in store, check online and you can probably have them delivered. So I'm gonna give it a coat of the nautical blue paint and then I had this galvanized heart from a sign that came from the Dollar Tree at Valentine's Day. And I'm also gonna give that a coat of the blue paint. And as you can see um, in the previous clip, I had cut out some red paper with white polka dots to fit in the inside of my bottle cap. So once my paint was dry, I'm gonna add some glue to my paper and I'm gonna add that to the inside of my bottle cap. And then I'm gonna add some vinyl to my little heart. And it says, United We Stand. And I'm just gonna add that right to the little heart. Now adding a little wood um, circle there to add some dimension, I'm gonna glue that down first and then add my heart on top. And then of course I'll add in that cute little jute twine at the top and our sign is complete. All right, this is a fun DIY and definitely a fan favorite. 
So we are going to start off with some of these one and a half inch wood rounds and then some of these wood pegs. I think that they're like furniture fillers like for chairs or something, but they're just called wood pegs. They've got a round end on one side and a flat end on the other. I'm gonna give these a coat of the sun-kissed peach, but you can definitely paint these any color you want. While those are drying, I'm gonna cut down a jumbo craft stick and I'm going to cut them at about, mm, I think one and a half to two inches tall. And then I'm gonna sand off two of the corners just to kind of round them up a little bit. Next, I'm gonna take a small craft stick and I'm going to cut them a little bit wider than our jumbo craft sticks. Next, I'm gonna give the brims of our hats a coat of the nautical blue from the Hello Hobby Walmart chalk paint. And then for the main part of the hat, I'll paint it white. And then once those are dry, I'm gonna take some washi tape and I'm gonna section off some stripes. And I'm gonna make these vertical stripes. Now using my favorite method to add paint when I'm using washi tape, I'm just going to add a makeup sponge to the end of a clothespin and I'm gonna dab that paint on in light layers until it is nice and opaque. And then of course, pull off that tape and you'll see that those strips are super clean. Now we're gonna add the brim to our hat and I'm just gonna add a little bit of hot glue and then place the brim down. And then we're gonna add our hats to our little rounds to create our heads. Now we're gonna add the noses. So just add another little dab of glue here and place your nose down where you'd like it to go. Now taking some of this Chanel yarn that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, I am going to glue on a little beard. So just going right underneath that nose, I'm going to glue little loops all the way around his nose so that he has a little beard or mustache, however you wanna look at it. Either way, we're adding just a little bit of this yarn to create that Uncle Sam look. And I'll go back over all of those loops just to kind of fill it in and make it look a little more full. Now adding some black chalk paint onto a stylus, I'm gonna add some little eyes just to give him some character. And then of course, adding some of the cameo pink from um, Apple Barrel onto the cheeks. And then I'm gonna go in with this uh, fingernail file and I'm just going to distress the edges a little bit just to make them look even more cute. <laughs> And isn't he adorable? <laughs> I love how these guys turn out. So now I'm going to paint some wood beads. So I'm um, not sure what sizes those are. Uh, like I said, I will leave the videos in my description box below so you can go check out the original videos to find out um, what products I used for each video. But either way, I'm gonna paint some wood beads blue, some white, and some red. And then I had added a little bead to the backs of my Uncle Sam so that they are super easy to string on to my garland. So I'm just going to continue my pattern until my garland is completely finished. And here is a look at how it turned out. I love how these guys turned out. They're so cute. What do you think? 
For this DIY, we're gonna use one of the Dollar Tree metal wreath forms. I needed that center section cut out, so I'm gonna use some wire cutters to just kind of clip those out. Make sure that you don't clip the three um, metal pieces that are connecting the top and the bottom. But basically what we want is just that very outside ring and the very inside ring. Next, I'm gonna take a piece of star card stock and I'm going to sketch out a fan blade. So this is just a rectangle that's a little bit wider at the top and smaller towards the bottom. You're gonna cut that out and that will be a template so that you can trace these onto a placemat from the Dollar Tree. And I'll just cut out, I think 12 of them. And then I'm gonna glue them to a skewer. So I just measured my skewers out to see how long they needed to be from center to where I wanted my fan blades to sit on the outside of my wreath form. Next, taking some Waverly Antique Wax and a baby wipe, I'm just going to add a little bit of wax to each of the skewers just to deepen them up and make them look a little more rustic. Now I need to figure out where I need my fan blades to go and um, then I will work on getting them spaced out evenly. So I'm gonna use my wreath form as a guide to figure out where my fan blades need to go. And then I will kind of move these around until they're spaced out pretty evenly. And once I get it how I want it, I will put that wreath form back on top of everything very gently so I don't move anything. Which you see here. And then I'm going to use a ton of hot glue to secure those down. So just adding a big dollop of glue um, onto the fan blades and the wreath form. I'm gonna let that dry and then flip it over and add a round piece to the front and then flip it back over and glue some more. So I probably used like two whole sticks of hot glue to secure this, but I didn't want anything popping off. And that circle in the front, I had given a coat of the Waverly Antique Wax to as well. So now I'm gonna go in with my chalk paint and I am going to paint five of these fan blades in the blue color and then five of them with the crimson color and five of them white. And I did go ahead and paint the white ones white just so that it all has a very even finish. Once everything is dry, I'm gonna go in with some vinyl that I'd cut out on my Cricut. I cut these into stars and I'm gonna place three of the stars onto each of the blue fan blades. Now I was looking at it and I thought it really just needed to be more rustic. So I'm gonna take my baby wipe and some of the antique wax and I'm gonna go over each of the fan blades just to make it look a little more rustic. I didn't like how white the fan blade was and like I said, I really wanted this piece to look very rustic. I feel like windmill, windmill fans or fans in general like that our farmhouse should be more rustic looking and weathered. So to finish this project off, I'm just going to add a little jute twine hanger so that I can hang this on my wall and that will complete this project. I really love how this project turned out. And again, this was one of your guys' favorite projects. For this DIY, we are going to make a tear tray garland. So I'm going to use some of those beads that I had painted before, and I'm gonna string them on to a piece of jute twine. And then I'm gonna place a knot at the top so that it will, um, you know, so the beads won't fall off. And then taking one of our Uncle Sam's that we created earlier, I'm gonna string that on to my garland. Now, I realized when I did this that it was going to need a knot um, down there at the bottom so that Sam didn't go all the way up to the top. It just, you know, 
created a little area for him to sit in. So I'll just create a couple of little knots so that it doesn't, um, so that it only goes a certain way, basically. I don't know how to explain that, but I didn't want him to go all the way up to the beads, basically. I didn't want the beads to fall down behind him. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. So now I'm gonna create a tassel. So I'm just using this wood round that I had sitting on my desk. You can use anything um, to create a tassel. You just, you know, wanna wrap it around a few times. And I'm gonna do the blue and red. So I'm gonna wrap the blue round uh, quite a few times. I have no idea how many times it was, but it was quite a few as you could see there. And then I'll wrap the red around, you know, trying to get it about the same number. Then I'm gonna take a piece of the bigger twine and I'm going to tie one end of my tassel together. And then the end that isn't tied, I will snip with my scissors. So now we have the fur, like the you know main part of our tassel here. And then you just tie a piece of twine around the kind of top portion of your tassel and then give it a haircut. And now you have a cute little tassel. So now I'm going to string my tassel onto my garland here. And this is where I was kind of like looking at it and I realized that it was gonna need some hot glue. So I just added a little hot glue to the back. And this little tassel turned out so cute, or I should say this little garland turned out so cute and I love it on my tear tray. All right, for this DIY, we're gonna use one of the 3D wood trucks from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm pretty sure you can't find these at the Dollar Tree anymore, but I wanted to leave this project in here because if you do a Google search and you type in wood truck cutout, you're gonna find that there's actually a lot of places that you can get wood truck cutouts. Now they might be the flat ones where you might need to add some tumbling tower blocks or some other kind of wood in between two of them, but you can pretty much make a very similar piece to this. So that's why I went ahead and kept this project in the video, even though you can't technically get the same truck from the Dollar Tree anymore. So I am using some scrapbook paper to cut out my wheel wells. I'm just using the cutouts of the truck to kind of figure out where I need to cut. And I'm just using my fingers and a stylus to mark off those areas. If you push against the cutouts and the open areas, your fingers will leave an impression on the paper that you can then cut out. So you'll see me do that here. I'm just pushing that paper down and then just pushing my fingers up against it to figure out, kind of giving myself a template basically to figure out where I wanna place it. Now, if you wanted to paint this, you could definitely do that. It'd probably be a little bit easier uh, depending, you know I mean? But sometimes scrapbook paper and uh, paper crafting is super fun and really relaxing. So I found something that was similar in size to my wheels. I did want the wheel itself to be showing uh, because I will go in and paint that with paint. <laughs> paint it with something, I don't know. I'll paint it with paint. Um, so basically I'm just making the wheel well. So that lid that I traced was pretty much the same size as the wheels on my truck. So I hope that that all makes sense. And if it doesn't, then hopefully just by seeing it, it will make sense to you. And it doesn't have to be an exact match, just close enough is great. And yeah, I'll do that to both sides.
So now we're gonna add some paper to uh, the main part of our truck. So I wanted the front part of my truck to have this blue paper with white stars. Uh, this paper has been in my stash for a really long time. So if you can't find anything similar, there are a lot of places where you can download digital papers online. Um, a lot of times for free even, and then you can print out your own paper. So I'm just going to trace the portion of the truck that I want to cover onto the back of my paper, and then I'll cut that out. And then I'm gonna mark off the wheel well, um, just so I can cut that wheel out. And now it should fit pretty well. Oh, I'll definitely go in and cut the window out. So I'm just gonna trace that with my pencil. It's a little tricky to get in there, but you, you know, it's, you can definitely get in there. And then I'll just use my box knife with a nice sharp blade to cut out that window section. And then using my glue stick, I will glue that down just like so. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing, um, with, but with the red portion. So wherever the blue paper isn't, this red and white paper will be. So I'm just going to follow the same steps that I did for the blue paper. Now taking some of the Waverly Chalk Pink paint in ink, I am going to paint in the wheels. And then I do end up painting the whole entire back of the front part of the truck and then the front and back of the back side. So everything that's not covered in paper, I gave a coat of the black chalk paint. Now to clean up any edges, I'm gonna go in with a fingernail file and just file that paper off so that everything is crisp. And if you really wanna protect this piece, you'll definitely wanna give it a coat of Mod Podge. Now I'm gonna add in my wheel wells and I'm just gonna glue those down. Again, going in with my fingernail file to sand off any excess. Make sure you let your glue dry first before you do this. So now I wanted to make this a truck that I could put something in. So to do that, I am just taking some craft sticks and I'm gonna cut them down so that they're long enough to kind of fit underneath that top part um, of the I don't know, that inside area, and then the bottom part. And I'm using a, like a medium-sized craft stick and then a small craft stick. And you'll wanna make sure that those um, craft sticks at the very end there where it's cut off are even. So just push those down and glue them with a little bit of hot glue. And then I cut off a little end of a craft stick to kind of work as a, the, 
tailgate, more or less. So I'm just gonna cut that down until it fits and then I'll glue that in as well. And again, I will paint that all with the Wearily Chalk Paint in black, or ink, I should say. And then I also wanted to create a area in the front so that nothing would fall out. And here is a look at our truck, and I think it is super cute. For this DIY, they had one of these United States DIY craft kits for kids. It had all the states um, marked on it in black ink, and then you could go in and paint all the states a different color. I basically just sanded off all that black ink or as much as I could, and then gave it a few coats of the Waverly Chalk Paint in white. Now I'm gonna go in with my ruler and I'm gonna mark off some stripes. And basically, I just wanted this to look like shiplap. So I'm gonna go over each of my pencil lines with my fingers just to kind of blend them out and soften them up a little bit. All right, so taking a dry paintbrush and some more white paint, I'm gonna go over some of those areas and just kind of soften everything up even more. Next, I'm gonna take the wood letters from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint a U red, an S white, and then an A blue. And then I will hot glue those onto the front of my states here in a diagonal line. So I had this frame on hand and it was from the Dollar Tree. Evidently I didn't have any other frame for this project. So I needed to create a new backer for my frame uh, because I didn't want that clip on the front and it would not come off. So I am just using some chipboard that I have in my stash. This is medium weight chipboard and I'm just gonna create a new back. So if you have a frame that doesn't have that clip on it, you just take out the glass and you don't even have to do this step. But if you have to do this step, then some chipboard like cereal box or some other kind of heavier material will work fine. So now I'm gonna take some of this red and white gingham fabric that I had in my stash and I'm going to glue it onto my chipboard. So I will just glue the long sides first, pulling it taut so that it's nice, there's no wrinkles, you know, in the front. And then I will go in and do the sides. And then you can just hot glue those little corners down so that it's nice and secure. And then if you want, you can even add another piece of cardstock over the back of your frame just to finish it off and make it look a little bit better in the back there. But the front looks really cute. <laughs> and then I will hot glue my USA right down into this frame. In the end, this design changed a little tiny bit. After looking at it a little bit more, I really hated that black frame. I didn't think that it looked very patriotic and I didn't care for it. So I decided that I was gonna go in and paint the frame white. And I was happier with that, but I still felt it was a little dull and not very dimensional. So after looking in my stash, I found the flat back pearls from the Dollar Tree that you can get at this in the sticker section and I added those all along the edge of the frame. Painted those white and then distressed them and I'm much happier with how this turned out. What do you think? Do you like the white or the black and would you have added the pearls? Let me know in the comments down below. For this DIY, we're gonna go all the way back to our February stash. Now, if you're anything like me, you have craft items that you picked up with good intentions of crafting with, but you never get around to it. So if you're like that, give me a thumbs up. 
let me know that we are souls of the same being because I always have extra crafting supplies that I never get around to using. So I figured, you know, patriotism and hearts, they go together, right? We love our country. So I am going to paint this heart in a red, white, and blue theme. So the very top part of our heart will be blue and then the bottom heart, I will alternate the red and white to create the stripes. Now I'm gonna go in with some of this twine. This is the white twine from Walmart and I'm gonna wrap it around that kind of seam area to hide that line between the blue and the red. I just wanted this to look a little more cohesive and if we're being honest, my lines weren't probably the straightest. So this was just a very good way to cover up any mistakes that I made. Now we're gonna go even way back, further back into our craft stash and we're gonna get into our Christmas stuff and we're gonna pull out some stars. <laughs> um, these are just some stars that I had in my stash. I painted them white and then I'm gonna add them to my little heart as well. So we've got our red and white stripes and our blue and white stars. And do you see the shine on that blue paint? That is the metallic blue paint. Uh, from Deco Art, I believe it is such a pretty metallic color. So if you've never tried metallic paints, you should give them a try sometime. And Fourth of July crafts are perfect for that metallic look. Now I'm just gonna create a little twine bow out of that same white twine to put on the front of my sign. All right, for this DIY, we're gonna use one of the Dollar Tree pizza pans. I gave this uh, pizza pan a coat of the Waverly chalk paint in white, and then I am going in with a little sponge dauber and going around all the edges in black. Then I'll go in with a more fine paintbrush and do kind of that inside edge and add some other little marks. Basically, you know, we're making this look like enamel, and if you know, you know, enamel is not perfect. So just kind of have fun with it, be a little creative, be a little messy, and it will look awesome. Now we're gonna add some burlap to the front of our pizza pan. This is like the four inch burlap that you can get at Walmart. And I'm just gonna hot glue that to the front of our pizza pan. Now to add more decoration and pizzazz to our pizza pan, I'm gonna add some of this red and white gingham ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree. I love this stuff. It's wired ribbon, but it also has this kind of metallic edge to it, which I thought was just very pretty and perfect for 4th of July. So 
so somehow or another I made this gorgeous bow I put it onto a zip tie um, you know it probably took me quite a long time to make this bow which is why it didn't get recorded but uh, there are lots of bow tutorials out there so if you need a bow tutorial just check on YouTube I know lots and lots of people have so many great bow tutorials and yeah so I'm just gonna stick that down with hot glue in the back just to secure it and then add a little craft stick over the top to make it even more secure and then I had this little bunting that I'd made a long time ago in my stash. It's just little triangles that I'd folded over onto some baker's twine. But I'm going to glue that down to the front of my pizza pan. Now I'm going to add this uh, flag from the Dollar Tree and I wanted to give it some motion. I wanted it to feel like it was kind of blowing in the wind. So I'm going to hot glue that down so that it looks like it's kind of blowing. And guys, this is one of my very favorite pieces. I really love how this one turned out and I know I'll be putting this out year after year. All right, so now we are moving on from nautical decor into a bright, cheerful summer decor. So I am using this little mason jar uh, wood sign from the Dollar Tree. I had covered the back of it with paper, uh, given the top of it a little hanger there with the um, wood beads. And it had been a project from something else. So I decided to repurpose it and I'm going to paint the bottom part of my mason jar white uh, instead of the agave blue. So once I get everything cleaned up, I'm just going to go in with my white chalk paint and I will give that a couple coats just to create a white base. Now I'd use these little citrus rounds that were, they're like stickers, wood stickers from the Dollar Tree. I hope that they have them again this year. I really enjoyed crafting with them. Um, but I'm gonna give these each a different color of paint. So I gave one a magenta color, one this lime green color, one yellow, and one a bright orange. And then I'm gonna go in to those areas in between the little segments and I'm going to paint that white. And that's just gonna make our fruit pieces stand out and look a little more like a fruit piece. For this one, I used my Cricut to cut out some vinyl with this saying, but as you guys know, if you've been on my channel for a while, uh, you don't have to use a Cricut. You can print this out on paper and then transfer it with some graphite paper and paint it in, or you could just Mod Podge a saying onto the front of your sign. So definitely don't think that you have to have a Cricut to create beautiful projects 
um, you know, sometimes it makes it a little bit easier, but you know, I don't even always like to use my Cricut because I just find it a little cumbersome and not, I don't know, it just feels like more work to me than just doing a transfer with graphite paper. But we can just do our signs the way we like to do them and how it is easiest for us. So at this time, I was using my Cricut a little bit more and a vinyl and I do love how the vinyl looks um, but I do like how I can paint on something as well and the painting process to me is just so relaxing and enjoyable so I probably why I like it so much but here's a look at how our sign turned out I think this is so cute and perfect for summer For this DIY, we're gonna create a beach ball. So this will end up being a perfect piece for a tear tray. I am just going to use one of these four inch wood cutouts that I grabbed at Walmart. And then I'm going to trace a smaller circle kind of towards one side and then create those little segment areas and paint them in different colors. And evidently I was trying out some new techniques <laughs> with my um, video graphics there. <laughs> I did kind of a rainbow order, did a magenta, a melon, yellow, lime green, pool blue, and then like a light a lavender purple. And then for the top of our beach ball, I just painted that white. Some more white paint and just kind of highlight those segments a little bit. So. Just using a fine detail brush, I'm gonna go in and segment those off, add a tumbling tower block to the back so it's freestanding. And this is a super cute little tear tray piece. For this DIY, we're gonna use one of these tag signs from Walmart. These are just little wood tag signs and I'm gonna give it a wash of this paint. This is just acrylic paint with a little bit of water in it to kind of create a wood stain. I thought it gave it a nice beachy look and really liked how it turned out. Now we're gonna use some of these wood stickers from the Dollar Tree. The peach or melon colored sandals were already painted and glittered and the wood ones I just gave a coat of this kind of lime green color too. Now I'm going to add my flip-flops to my sign so I wanted my uh, melon colored ones to be flat on the tag and then the green ones will be popped up a little bit so I just added that sticker that was on the green ones or on the orange ones onto the green ones and then hot glued those down now I am going to make this into a little garland for tear tray so I had made a tassel and now I'm just going to knot that onto my tag. And look at how cute that is. I'm just using some white and pink Baker's twine uh, just to kind of stick with those bright, cheerful colors for summer. Now I created a second garland using wood beads and I used to use those bright rainbow colors and white beads to create that super adorable garland. I love how different these look, but how similar they look at the same time. And both of them are so fun on a tear tray. So I had so much fun with this DIY. I love paper crafting. It's how I got started in DIYing in the first place. And when I can kind of get back to those 
those paper crafting roots. I really do enjoy it. So I had gone on to the Cricut Design Space, picked out some swimsuits, cut them out in different styles of paper, and now we are ready to get our sign together. So I had used a sign from Valentine's Day. Doesn't really matter what sign you use. You can use any that you'd like. Um, but I just painted the backside white. Now I'm going to wrap uh, some jute twine around the sign. So I'm gonna create two different areas where there's going to be jute twine. So for this sign, it naturally has those notches out of it. And so I'm gonna wrap the twine around the top notch and the very bottom notch. Now for the fun part, we get to hang our swimsuits up. So I'm taking the mini clothes pins from the Dollar Tree, but you can get these at Walmart or any craft store. And I'm gonna hang these up onto the jute twine. And uh, look how cute this is. Like it just screams summer to me. It looks like so many people have been out in the pool having fun and now all the swimsuits are hanging out drying. You know, probably everybody's having a barbecue and um, you know, just having a good time while their swimsuits are drying on the line. Next, I wanted to add a decal. Now this is probably an afterthought more than, more than likely. So, you know, put your decal on before you put your swimsuits on and ask me why I didn't take them off. I have no clue <laughs> because I like to make things hard, I guess. <laughs> so I'm just gonna add that decal um, and then I'll just kind of rearrange everything to make it look super cute, but they can hang any way you want. Then I'm gonna add back a hanger to this sign and I'll just use the white jute twine from Walmart. I really like this white twine. It's nice and thick and um, it's white. So it goes with so many things and it looks bright and cheerful. Now I'm gonna distress the edges of my sign. So I'm just using some of this Distress Oxide ink you could use antique wax for this or um, a little bit of paint. Probably watered down paint would probably be, bleh, probably be a better option than just regular straight paint. But you can create the same look with um, just paint or antique wax. I just kind of felt like it needed to be more vintage. Like it just felt like it was a kind of a vintage vibe to me. So that's why I was going in and making the sign look a little more vintage. And I'll go around the swimsuits too, just to kind of deepen up those edges. And like I said, give it that more vintage rustic vibe. And I love how this sign turned out. It just makes me so happy. So for this DIY, we're gonna use one of these flip-flop craft kits. Um, I'm not gonna use that side of it though. I'm gonna flip them over and I'm gonna paint these yellow. Then I'm gonna go in with my pencil and I'm going to draw in the straps. So I just kind of copied what I saw from the other side and I just drew those in. So it's kind of like a V with a little, um, I don't know, a little line at the very bottom of that V. So it's pretty easy to draw those in. And then I'm gonna paint those with this nice, really beautiful blue color. Taking this round sponge brush from the Dollar Tree, I'm gonna create some circles on my flip flops. So basically, I just added some paint to my sponge, placed my sponge down onto my flip flops and gave it a little twist and that creates the perfect circle. To create some polka dots on this center part here, I'm gonna cover one side with a little bit of napkin there and then I can kind of go in and make it look 
like um, the edge of the flip-flop there. And then use a paintbrush to clean up any edges that you want. Now going in with a paint marker, I am going to outline my flip-flops just to make them stand out and make them look a little more bold. And I'm purposefully not going around the edge perfectly. I wanted that kind of artistic feel uh, where you see sometimes that line is just kind of wonky along the very outside edge. So I really was going for that look. It wasn't like an accident or something. <laughs> and then I created some little tiny black polka dots all around the pink big polka dots. Now going into the inside of the pink polka dots, I'm going to add some swirls. So you know that I love to add all these little details. Of course, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I love how these little details look and turn out on my projects. For this DIY, we're gonna use one of these metal houses from the Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna add some glue to the front of it here and then add some paper to the front of that. Now, if you can't find these metal houses, just use this project as inspiration. Look around and see what you can find. You might be able to find something similar and create a very similar project with something completely different. So I'm gonna cut around the very outside edge, just kind of close, but we're going to go in with some sandpaper to really fine tune those edges. So once that glue is dry, you're gonna go in with your sandpaper and just run that along the edges and it'll just kind of cut the paper basically and create a very, very smooth edge. Now I needed to cut out that middle circle, so I just poked my scissors through, gave it a rough cut and then decided to just cut off a little bit of sandpaper, wrap it around a paintbrush, and that made it very easy to go in and sand off that extra paper on this circle. Now to the back of the house, I'm gonna add a contrasting piece of paper uh, to, you know, so it pokes out the front there. <laughs> and then we're gonna go back to those flip-flop stickers and we're going to give them a coat of this lighter colored paint so they were navy blue and i was you know my my color scheme was a little bit lighter so i just painted them to match my decor and i added those to the center and this is just a super cute super simple little tear tray decor piece for this DIY, we're gonna use the five gallon stir sticks. I am going to tape seven of them together with some blue painter's tape. And the reason I paint them together is so that I can cut them all out at the same time and they'll be exactly the same length and won't move around on me while I'm cutting them. I'm gonna take them out to my miter box and handsaw and I'll cut them down to 11 inches. Next, I'm gonna give them a quote unquote wood stain of paint. This is just acrylic paint with water and it basically just creates a little wood stain for your project. Next, I'm going to lay my sticks out in the color order that I want just to make sure that everything looks good and that the colors are in the exact order that I want them. Now I will flip them all over in that same order and then I will get my square from the Dollar Tree out just to make sure everything's lined up nicely. And then I am going to use some of these one gallon stir sticks that I had in my stash. I'm just gonna cut those down so that they're the right size. And then I'm gonna glue them to the backs of my boards. Now I'm using wood glue and hot glue to glue these together. 
and there is our base for our sign. Now the fun part, I'm taking an eight and a half by 11 canvas. This is just a flat canvas. And I am going to add my colors onto my canvas. I'm just scrubbing them on. Make sure that you wait for the paint to dry in between each color, but you're just going to randomly put your colors all over your canvas. So you just want to play here, have fun, enjoy the process. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be in any kind of order. Just do whatever you like and have fun. This is a great project for kids as well. So we're doing a reverse canvas. This is such a fun project. I love reverse canvases. And you know, when you're first doing them, they look like a hot mess and you're thinking to yourself, hmm, is this really gonna turn out as cool as I hope? And then in the end, you are pleasantly surprised. So while that was drying, I went to my Cricut and I cut out a saying. Now I'm just using shelf liner here because this is gonna end up in the garbage. This isn't anything you're saving um, because we're gonna paint over the top of it. So use something that you don't really care about. Don't use expensive vinyl for this part. Shelf liner works perfectly. So I'm going to transfer my saying on to my canvas. And again, looking at it, you're probably thinking, where is this going? How is this going to turn out? But trust me, this will be so cute and you're going to be shocked at how fun it is when it is all done. So making sure that you press everything down super well, you wanna make sure that there are no gaps in your vinyl because you don't want any bleeding here. So. Just make sure you take your time and really press down that shelf liner or vinyl um, so that there are no, there's no chance that the paint here that we're adding can get underneath. Now, I strongly suggest using a sponge and pouncing your paint in light layers here, especially over those areas where that shelf liner is. So just kind of take your time this is kind of a process, but it is so fun. So just pounce that paint on and make sure you get everything covered and completely filled in and white. Now we're gonna go back in and we're gonna remove that shelf liner after everything is dry. So make sure everything's dry before you start this part. Uh, but once it is, then look at this. Like how cute is this? I love this. I love this technique, it is so fun. Like sunshine kisses and summer wishes, how adorable, right? And then I just added that to my base, added a little wood frame and voila, a super cute sign. This project is going to use the remnants of our five gallon stir sticks from the last project. So I just cut the handles off and was left with about six inches. And again, I'm just going to go in with those same colors and stain my wood. Now I am going to kind of stagger my pieces a little bit. I don't want them to be in a straight line. I wanted them to look a little staggered. And then I'm gonna go in with a jumbo craft stick and I'm going to stick these all together using a hot glue and wood glue to make sure that we've got a nice secure hold. Now we're gonna go in and do a stencil again, except we're gonna do it the opposite way. Now we're creating a real stencil. So again, I'm using the shelf liner. I cut it out with my Cricut and we're gonna go in with some white paint and fill in those areas that you see peeking through. So this sign is going to say, life is better in flip-flops. Mm -hmm. 
So now I know not everybody has a Cricut and this project would be maybe a little bit harder to do without a Cricut. I think you could probably do it, but it is a lot nicer to have a stencil that you can fill in. So for those of you that don't have a Cricut, if I had a vinyl stencil or a stencil of some sort in my Etsy store, which isn't open right at the moment, but I could open it up. And if I had things like this available, when I use my Cricut, would you be interested in purchasing something like this so that you can create these same projects? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to be helpful for those of you that don't have a Cricut. Um, you know, I definitely would have to, of course, cover my shipping costs, but I would make it as cheap as possible for you um, just because I want you to be able to craft these crafts even if you don't have a Cricut. So just let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Now we're going to remove that shelf liner and because I had to cut this in separate pieces and parts, the middle part um, wasn't on there yet, but I did go back in and do the better in part that you see there um, the exact same way that I had done the life and flip flops. <laughs> so I just didn't show you that because you know, we didn't need to see that, it's the exact same process. So we're gonna use some more of these wood stickers from the Dollar Tree in the flip-flop shape. And I'm just adding a little bit of that watered down paint to two of these flip-flops. And I just chose pink and blue, but really you can choose any color you want for this part of the project. Make it your own and do what you like. So now we're gonna add them to our sign and I'm just gonna hot glue those down. Now this would be super cute for a shelf, but if you wanna hang this up, grab a little bit of jute twine, create a hanger on the back, put some hot glue on there, and then some tape over the top and you've got a very sturdy and strong holder for the back of your sign. How cute is this little sign? For this DIY, I was heavily inspired by something I had seen on Pinterest and I wanted to create something similar. So I went to Walmart, picked up this wood round for 97 cents, I guess. And um, it is a plaid product that you can find in their crafting section. And then taking a compass, I'm going to create a circle with a pencil just on the inside edge of the outer circle. So it's probably about a half inch from the very edge, but I don't think I was being too precise about it. Next, I'm going to tape off some stripes with some painter's tape using a piece in between as a guide for how wide I wanted my stripes to be. Now I'm gonna go in with a paintbrush and this beautiful yellow, and I am going to very carefully paint in that center section. Now I wanna make sure that I am not going over my pencil mark because I want that very outside edge to be plain white. So I'll just continue painting until it is all filled in and then I will take that painter's tape off and let it all dry. Now I'm gonna go in with a half inch flat brush and some Waverly chalk paint in ink and I'm going to create a little checkerboard pattern all the way around the outside edge of my circle. Now using a fine detail brush and more of the black paint, I am going to just create a line in between those two circles. And now using a stylus and some white paint, I'm gonna pop a little polka dot into each of those black rectangles. Now we're gonna paint on our motif of flowers and vines. Now I'm gonna freehand this, but you could definitely go with the pencil and pre-draw your design. So real quick, I wanted to get on here and talk to you guys about art. <laughs> um, I get people leaving me comments all the time saying, your stuff is beautiful. I wish I could paint like that, or I could never paint like that. And 
I just wanted to tell you guys um, that seven or eight years ago, I was kind of in that same boat. Like I didn't think that I could do anything beyond like elementary stick figures. And if it kind of turned out like something that resembled something else, it was like a good day for me. And so I, you know, I mean, I've always kind of been creative. I um, started out doing, you know, paper crafting, which I really enjoyed, like creating cards and stuff like that, but it didn't require any kind of drawing skills or art skills. Um, and so when I decided <laughs> that I wanted to learn how to draw, you know, I kept seeing all these people doing these amazing things and I wanted to know how to do that too. So I got onto YouTube, of course, we love YouTube. <laughs> And I started following tutorials and one artist that I followed pretty heavily and was pretty, she was pretty instrumental in my own uh, artistic journey was Karen Campbell and I will leave her links down below. Um, but she is a self-taught artist and also, you know, had humble <laughs> artistic uh, beginnings. She didn't draw anything in particular um, before she started kind of studying it and learning. And um, she is in the belief that anybody can become an artist. And I believe that too. I think that if you want to, you most definitely can become an artist. It just takes practice and it takes just a little bit of dedication to the craft um, and a lot of <laughs> paper, a lot of pencils, a lot of paint. <laughs> so if you honestly want to learn how to create art, draw or paint or anything else, um, you know, go, go follow some tutorials, start, start studying up on it and start practicing. My favorite quote right now is practice doesn't make perfect practice makes improvement. And I think that that is such a powerful quote because you know, most of us aren't going to get to the point where we're perfect at anything, um, but we can improve. And I think that by practicing, uh, it, improving is always going to happen. So if you practice, that improvement's going to get there, is going to be there, I should say. And you're going to get to a place where you're happy with your art um, if you keep trying and keep practicing. So that is what i wanted to tell you guys um so you know i mean look at grandma moses she didn't start painting until she was 78 years old and we've probably all seen her artwork like she was an amazing artist but you know she started learning later in life so i also want to just say it's never too late to learn um so if you're older or think that you're too old to learn a new you know skill you're not it it can be done by anybody and if you want to you should do it now we've moved on to our lemon themed diys i love lemon for summer it just screams bright fresh cheerful and when I think of summer, I think of a big old glass of ice cold lemonade or a big old squeeze of lemon into my iced tea. Delicious. And who doesn't love a little bit of lemon in their ice water as well? So not only do I love to consume lemons, but I like decorating with them too. So let's create some lemon decor. For this DIY, we're gonna use some of the Dollar Tree wood stickers. These were the fruit pieces that they had and one is actually a citrus slice so it's got the little citrus markings on it but the other one is a watermelon so i just turned the watermelon over and took the sticker off and then that's the side that i painted going in with a fine detail brush and white chalk paint i am going to create the rind so i'm just going in about an eighth of an inch from the edge there and following that shape now I'm going to section off my little wedge and I'm just going to do that kind of randomly and just make a few different little segments there. Now 
Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to round out those triangles. So when we sectioned off those areas, it kind of looked like a triangle. And then we want to turn those shapes into a teardrop. So I just draw the teardrop shape inside of that triangle and then fill in any area that is outside of that teardrop just so it looks like the rind. And then for the full slice, there are lines on it that were etched in the wood when it was cut. And so I just followed those lines and did the same thing with the little teardrop shape and filling in the white areas. Then I actually went into the little slices and added a couple of little tiny teardrops to represent little seeds. Now we're gonna create our little shadow box that our lemon slices are gonna go into. I am repurposing a shadow box that I had on hand. I believe it is probably a four by four, three by three, something like that. Just kind of a small shadow box. Um, and it had been painted white and it had the stripes on it already that were uh, the Nantucket blue here. So I'm just painting over the stripes that were pretty much already there. I had to sand them down to get some of the stuff off that was on there before, but this is a perfect way to repurpose something that you've used before. Now we're gonna arrange our fruit slices in the shadow box. So I'm gonna put the fruit slices in here before I glue them down, just to kind of figure out placement. I tried it with the wedge at the top and then at the wedge with the wedge at the bottom and ultimately liked the way this looked better. But you'll have to let me know in the comments down below which way you liked best. And then we're just gonna hot glue those down right into the shadow box. And here is a look at our little shadow box. I think this is so cute and it looked so cute on my tear tray. So I don't know if you noticed me painting this piece at the beginning of the last segment, but this is just one of those crafter square kind of thick wood rounds and it had a hole in it. I just filled that in with some spackle, let it dry, and then I gave it a couple of coats of that Waverly chalk paint in maize. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to make our lemon slice. So we're going to go in about a quarter of an inch to a half inch in from the edge and paint a nice white line using a little detail brush. Now we're going to divide our lemon slice into quarters and then each of those quarters I'm going to divide into thirds. So we'll have 12 sections all together but you can have as many or as little segments as you'd like. Now that we have those rec, no, <laughs> triangles, now that we have all those triangles, we're gonna do that teardrop shape in those triangles. And then any of the little triangles that you see left over, you're gonna paint in white. Now remember that this is a natural element, like a nature, so it isn't going to be symmetrical it's going to have little wonky bits. If it's a little crooked in some areas, or if one teardrop is really small and the other one's big, it's okay because that's kind of the way the lemons look in nature, I mean, in real life. So I wasn't too worried about making sure that this was, um, you know, symmetrical at all. I just was having fun painting it and making it look like an adorable lemon. And then again, I will go into those yellow areas and add little tiny teardrops to represent seeds. And there you have it, our cute little lemon slice. All right, for this DIY, we're gonna use one of those 97 cent 
wood rounds from Walmart that you can find in their crafting section. It's a plaid product. So just go over to the crafting section, look for the rounds that are from plaid. And that's exactly what this is. I think it's about seven inches or so. I gave it a coat of white paint and now I'm going to section off um, some areas where I want to paint stripes. So I'm going to go in with this Nantucket blue. Um, I think I mentioned before that the blue and the yellow just really sing to me and I just love this color combination together. So that is the color combination you'll see throughout these DIYs. So because my tape is wider than the section that I want to mark off, I am doing this a little bit differently. So um, I'm using my mat here as a guide to my one inch marks. So I wanna create one inch stripes and I am just utilizing my mat there to help me mark off with the painter's tape those one inch strips. Now, if I had one inch painter's tape, this wouldn't be a problem. I would just add the tape and then a marker and then add the tape and so on like you've seen me do before. But because this tape was a little bit wider, um, I decided that I didn't really wanna draw the lines on there with the pencil and I just went in um, with the tape and marked it off using my mat. So that's another way to do it if you don't want to have those pencil lines in there. Just obviously make sure that your paint is super dry before putting painter's tape over the top of the last coat. Otherwise you will definitely pull up that paint. It needs to be super dry. So um, I, I probably at this point would just use my ruler and mark off the lines instead of doing it the way I did it here. All right, now that all the stripes are on and it's painted, I am going to sand this down. So I don't know if you notice or not, but as I'm sanding, the blue is kind of spreading into my white a little bit. So you wanna be careful that um, if you want your white, white to stay bright, that you don't really sand your blue into your white. I was able to pretty much clean up a lot of it with a baby wipe, but you'll wanna kinda of keep that in mind if you don't really want to worry about blue getting into your white. So when I went to go do this project, lemons, you can find lemon, wood lemon things anywhere. Um, they were not around. And so I spent some time in the craft store looking around and I came up with the brilliant idea of using a football. So I used the backside of a football to create a lemon and I think it worked out pretty well. What do you think? Do you think that the lemon, uh, the football works as a lemon? Let me know in the comments down below. So I'm gonna grab a leaf from a pick that I had from the Dollar Tree. I just kind of cut out the um, plastic stem there in the middle, and then I am going to glue that underneath my lemon wedge. So I wanted my lemon to sit up a little tiny bit off of the wood round. I added a little piece of uh, wood at the back. It's just one of those pineapple stickers from the Dollar Tree sticker pack, and oh, voila, it looks perfectly cute, and I just adore how this turned out. For this DIY, we're gonna use one of these tags from Walmart. It's a wood tag. And I really love these because they kind of have two separate areas that you can paint. So it looks like it's a stacked tag. So you can paint that back area a different color than the front if you want. And you can really coordinate these to go with any decor you're creating. So as you can see, I'm painting that back area yellow and then the front is white. And because I'm creating a beaded garland for my tear tray, I have painted up a couple of beads there. They're just a couple of different sizes of wood beads. And I also had created some extra lemon slices 
when I painted the other ones before. So now I'm just gonna take one of these little wood pineapples, break off the top, and then glue those together uh, so that it kind of adds a little bit of dimension to my lemon slice on my tag. Now I'm gonna use some washi tape and I'm just gonna mark off a couple of stripes. I just wanted to add some of the Nantucket blue on here to help everything work together and be cohesive. So, so it's kind of an afterthought and I'm just kind of eyeballing the size. And then I'll go in with a Nantucket blue and paint it in. Now I'm going to string on my beads onto my jute twine. So I'm using a white, yellow, white, blue pattern, and I'm just going to string on as many beads as I want until, you know, I'm happy with it. Next, I'm going to add my twine through my tag and everything is still attached. I haven't cut anything off, but I'm going to tie this part onto my tag first. So I'll just use that darning needle to help me uh, tie the knot. Just makes it a little bit easier. And I wanna make sure that that twine is nice and snug there inside the hole. And then go in again with a knot. And then I will actually now I'm going to thread the jute twine back up through a few of the beads just to help hide that loose end. And then I'll clip off that piece of the twine. So I don't know if this is the easiest way to create a garland, but it kind of worked for me. Um, I'm just creating the tassel with the jute twine that was there at the end of the garland. So I just wrapped it around my fingers a few times and now I'm gonna tie off that kind of top portion of the tassel with another piece of jute twine in. <laughs> the first one I got was too short. So just make sure that you pull a long enough piece off and as I was sitting there thinking about it, I was like, mm, I think I should probably tie it off at the top there uh, so that it's secure. I think I was a little worried about it maybe coming undone or being pulled out. So I think by tying that off at the top and then tying the bottom of it around the tassel, um, it worked out better. So you can just add a tassel to your garland any way you like. Um, I think it's personal preference. And here is a look at our garland. I think this is just really cute and really pretty. For this DIY, I wanted to create some little stuffed lemons for my tear tray. So I am taking a piece of fabric I folded it over on top of itself and now I am tracing a football because to me that makes a lemon shape and then I am going to cut out the lemon shapes and because I have that fabric folded over on top of itself when I cut these out I will have two pieces that are the same size.
Now that we have that cut out, we are going to use our glue gun to glue around the edges. So I'm just going in a little bit, maybe an eighth of an inch or so, and adding some hot glue. And then I will place the top part down and glue these pieces together. Now, if you have a sewing machine or want to do this by hand, I think that that would work um, better than the glue gun actually. Um, to me, fabric and glue gun aren't the most optimal choice but it does work so i am just going to leave a little tiny area open there at the kind of bottom front that way i can add that polyfill in there so now taking my scissors i am just going to make some little cuts right up kind of to that glue line along the edge and that's just going to kind of fray our fabric out a little bit and you can see there's the little hole and you just want to make that hole big enough that you can stuff it so however big you need to do that and you can use a pencil or any kind of like little stick to help get that polyfill in there and what, once you get it in there it's you're good to go so sometimes it's a little difficult to get that going but just take tiny pieces or smaller pieces and just fill it to however full you want i didn't want my lemons to be too full but I wanted them to have a little bit of poof. You could also use cotton balls here. That would work perfectly for this. And, um, or a little scraps of fabric, whatever you wanna use to fill your lemons. And then just use your hot glue to secure that little area. Now I'm just kind of rubbing the blades of my scissors along those edges to kind of fray them up a little bit. So now I'm going to take some green fabric that I had on hand and I am going to fold over those. There's two pieces there um, I know it's hard to tell, but there are two pieces there and I'm just going to freehand a little leaf shape and then I will just glue the entire leaf together. So I'm not going to put any uh, like filler in there. It's just going to be flat, but I am going to go ahead and clip the very outside edges and then fray them as well because I wanted these to look cute and rustic. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue to my leaf and attach it to my lemon. Then I'm going to use some of the Dollar Tree Taking Stripe ribbon to create a bow and I'll add that to the front of these little lemons too. How adorable are these? For this DIY, we're gonna use a football again. I thought that these were just perfect shape for lemons. So I, again, painted the backside of the football in the maize color from Waverly. Then I went in with my pencil and I wrote out the words, fresh lemon and five cents. Then I went in with my black painter's pen, my acrylic paint marker, and went over my pencil lines. Now I'm gonna go in with some white chalk paint just to add a little highlight on the top of our lemon to make it look a little more fresh and cute. So this basket I found at Goodwill. It was a ugly color, but I liked the shape. So I spray painted it with this really pretty blue color. And then I'm gonna add in this Buffalo check scarf that I found at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna kind of arrange it in there. Doesn't have to go in any certain way. And then I will glue our lemon onto the front of the basket. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna fiddle with this stinking scarf a little bit more, but ultimately it really doesn't matter. So don't spend too much time making your scarf look perfect because you're just gonna put these lemons in here. These big ones are from the Dollar Tree. If you see these at your Dollar Tree, definitely snag up a pack, especially if you're gonna do lemon decor because they always go so fast. And then this smaller, um, or this other package with smaller lemons in it is from Hobby Lobby. Now I'm just gonna add in some leaves from this pick that was from the Dollar Tree. And that pretty much completes this project. I love how cute and festive this little black basket turned out.
For this DIY, we're gonna utilize another football. This one's just a little bit bigger than the other ones you've seen so far. And I am spelling out the words sweet summer in my black acrylic marker. So I always go in with pencil before I go in with paint. Well, at least most of the time, because I don't trust myself to write uh, my words the same height or in a straight line. <laughs> so it's usually a good idea for me to go in with pencil beforehand. Now I'm gonna go in with my paintbrush and my white paint, and I'm just gonna add some highlights. Doesn't have to be realistic, just whatever makes you happy. I just wanted it to kind of look like maybe there was some sun on these lemons, and they just look a little more summery to me. So I found this cute little box at my Goodwill. It wasn't in super terrible shape, but it sure was ugly. So I gave it a coat of spray paint and freshened it right up. And if you're interested in like the colors that I've used, I'll link the video that this project came from in my description box down below. And then you can go check out the description box of that video to find out all the information of the products that I used. So I'm just gonna glue those leaves down to the back side of the football. And then I'm gonna glue my little lemon right to the front of my box. Then I had this lemon ribbon from the Dollar Tree in my stash and just knew it would be perfect here on this handle. So I'm gonna glue this down right to the center of the handle on my box or the very top of my box here. I don't know that it's necessarily a handle. I guess it kind of is. It's kind of an interesting little box. It's not really like a toolbox, but it's not, I don't know. I think it might've been like a kid's toy actually. But here it is all put together. I added some lemon plates, napkins, and some yellow and white striped straws. What do you think? Now we're gonna go in with some lemon and lavender DIYs. I love lemon and lavender together. I think it is a very beautiful color combination. So for this first DIY, I wanted to do a mini painting of some lavender. So to get started, I'm gonna take a four by four inch canvas that I picked up at Michael's. I'm gonna drip on some paint in random spots, a lot more white than black. And then I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm just going to run my paintbrush through both of those colors at the same time. And as they mix, it's going to make a couple of different colors of gray, but you'll also see those black and white highlights as well. Now taking a wet baby wipe, I am going to just kind of stipple that all over the wet background and it's just going to create some texture on my piece. Then I'm gonna add some white paint to my baby wipe and I'm going to pounce that onto my project as well. And as you can see, all of that beautiful texture is coming through. So I am just going to let you guys watch this painting instead of trying to explain it to you. If you want a more detailed explanation, definitely go check out the link for this video in my description box. Um, and I think that you'll find that video where I kind of walk you through what I'm doing. But for now, I'm just going to be quiet and let you enjoy the painting.
So here's a look at our final painting. What do you think? Do you like it? For this DIY, I'm going to use one of those mini shadow boxes again. Um, this one is just painted exactly like you saw before. And I am going to pull off some of the sprigs of lavender that I get from Walmart. Uh, the Walmart lavender is better in my opinion than the Dollar Tree lavender, but you can use whatever you like. If you find some at Michael's or Hobby Lobby that you like better, uh, definitely use that. But I just really like the way the Walmart lavender looks. So I'm going to put a few pieces together and then I'm going to tie them off with some jute twine. And I'm going to glue that right into my shadow box. Now I'm gonna go in with another one of those lemon slices that I created earlier. And I'm gonna glue that right there with my lavender. So I was just kind of playing around with it to get it where I like it. And then I will make that final decision and glue it down. So here's a look at how that turned out. Super simple but super adorable for a tear tray. All right, so this is just a kind of a real quick, not really a DIY, but I took that lemon round that I created before and I added some feet to it. Now it's a little riser. How cute, right? And we're going to squeeze in one more DIY before the end of this video. So I'm going to use one of these Dollar Tree votive holders and I'm going to wipe it down really well with rubbing alcohol. So to create a straight lane on something round, hold a Sharpie marker on something that is the height in which you want your line. Then spin the product with the Sharpie marker touching it and you'll create a perfectly straight line all the way around the item that you're wanting to add a line to. Now, if you want to go in and try to tape off the area, you have a straight line now from the Sharpie marker that you can do that. Um, I'm just going to freehand it and I'm just using the plaid or the folk art multi-surface paint for this. Now, as a side note, you'll have to give this multiple coats of paint to achieve this nice opaque look. But once you get there, it looks beautiful. So this is probably three or four coats of paint. Now I'm going to add some jute ribbon. This is from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to add it with hot glue. But if you know uh, anything about hot glue and glass that, you know, they pretty much don't go together very well. So if you want this to hold together long term, definitely use some E6000 or some other kind of glue that um, holds well to glass. So I'll just add a strip to the top and the bottom of that purple stripe. And because the bottom of the glass jar is visible, I did want to add some of this cute little river rock in there. And then I added in some lemons and a lavender. How cute is that? And I just love that yellow and purple together. And here is a look at the tear tray that I created using all of the lemon elements. I really, really think that this is just such a cute tear tray and I enjoyed it all last summer. So you'll definitely have to let me know what you think. All right, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this mega summer video. 32 different projects. What a ride, right? 
uh, let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite. Let me know if you like the mega video. And I hope you have a happy, healthy, and blessed day. And I will see you on the next video. Bye!